Get ready for the ride of your life. It's a bold new series that asks the most provocative questions and takes you wherever they lead. Every great journey begins with curiosity. There is a particular idea or rumor related to elevators that makes the rounds from time to time. Basically, it says, if you happen to be in an elevator that is in free fall, you can jump at the precise moment when the elevator hits the ground. This little leap will save your life, or at least reduce the degree of your injuries. That sounds rather cool, but jumping in a free falling elevator actually helps. No! 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 Let's look at the factors involved here. First off, it would be almost impossible for you to know what floor your level. With while experiencing a free fall, assuming that there was a power outage, how would you know the precise moment at which to jump? Even if, by some miracle, you jumped at precisely the right moment, would you be able to walk away unscathed? No, if you jumped even a little before the elevator struck the ground, you would crack your head against the ceiling of the elevator, causing even more damage. Even if you jumped at the exact moment of impact, you would change your velocity only a small amount. This minute change in your velocity would be insignificant, in terms of the severity of injuries that you sustain. Another suggestion holds that you should stand with your knees bent to absorb the impact, like a skydiver. The effectiveness of this approach at high speeds, however, shows that you would likely be subjecting your knees and legs to greater injury risk. This approach also keeps your body parallel to the lines of force, which increases the chance of bone breakage as you crumple to the floor under high load. With these factors in mind, the best bet is to lie flat on your back on the floor, and cover your face, and head to guard against debris. Hitting the ground floor in this position spreads the force of impact across your body, it also orients your spine and long bones perpendicular to the impact direction, which will better protect them from crushing damage. Your thinner bones, like ribs, might still snap like twigs. Lying flat on your back, if you can manage it, is probably your best bet for surviving a falling elevator. Unfortunately, several problems plague even this approach. First, making gravy without the lumps. With your body positioned flat on the floor, your soft tissues including your brain and organs absorb the full impact. Considering that even low-speed fender benders can cause severe damage, it's easy to imagine the consequences of a sudden stop at 50 plus miles per hour would be dire indeed. Second, the tiger trap. There's always the possibility that no matter how well you cushion for impact, something else will do you in. For example, the elevator car might be destroyed on impact, transforming the floor into a zone of impaling, lacerating and crushing debris. Betty Lou Oliver, who holds the Guinness World Record for longest fall survived in an elevator, lived through falling 75 stories, more than 1,000 feet, in an Empire State Building elevator in 1945. Had she been lying on the floor, she probably would have been killed. In her case, the disconnected elevator cable coiled at the bottom of the shaft softened her landing. Even taking all these factors into account, lying flat on your back, if you can manage it, is still probably your best bet for surviving a falling elevator.